Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is the fourth episode, Naruto was unfamiliar with luck. And when Naruto gets lucky, it doesn't go well. When Naruto is beaten on a stormy night, something strange happens. Lightning struck Naruto, but he survived. Remember to like and subscribe. Let's get this party started, shall we, Kakashi Sensei? Use the code names Naruto, Kakashi said. Kakashi could hear Naruto sigh over the headset. White Lightning. Naruto grunted out. Naruto could basically hear Kakashi smiling through the headset. Yes Black Thunder, Kakashi said. Naruto could hear Sakura and Sasuke laughing at the stupid nicknames Kakashi had chosen for them. If you ever and I mean ever send us to catch this fucking cat again, I will castrate you and feed your testicles to the cat, Naruto said. Naruto heard nothing but silence. He then heard Kakashi take a loud gulp. Is that a threat Naruto? Kakashi said. No it's a promise. I will not and I repeat, will not catch this cat again. If I'm forced to do so again, you will pay dearly, Naruto said in the utmost serious voice. Naruto heard Kakashi sigh in defeat on the other end of the line. Fine. Let's just finish the mission, Kakashi said before ending the connection. Naruto grinned and reached behind him to grab his sword. But re frowned when he realized that his sword was still gone. Naruto felt weird without the weapon. It didn't feel right. Naruto quickly shook the thoughts out of his head and bounded into the forest. He stayed low to the ground in order to track the almost invisible track the cat had left. Eventually he found the cat in a wide clearing, cleaning itself. Naruto decided to forego stealth and jumped into the clearing facing Tora. Tora. I thought we you said you weren't running away anymore, Naruto said in his feline tongue. Tora looked up at him lazily and with a heavy sigh. I'm getting old Naruto-kun. I'm not as fast as I used to be. I decided to give the chase one last time. And I needed my greatest opponent to challenge me. So are you up for it? One last twirl? Tora asked curiously. Naruto saw the excitement that was barely hidden under Tora's calm demeanor. He sighed and shrugged. Why not? Sure Tora. But I'm not holding back. I'll give you a 30 seconds head start, Naruto said. As soon as Naruto finished his sentence, Tora disappeared from Naruto's sight. Naruto whistled in shock at the sudden speed Tora showed. Wow, she's been holding back. Naruto thought to himself as he began to slowly count down. 5 Tora leapt up a tree and dashed across its limbs. 4 Tora leapt from tree to tree, showing agility on A it could exhibit. 3 Tora backtracked herself and started to set up several tracks to confuse Naruto. It was a futile effort but 1 Tora knew could save her milliseconds. 2 Tora dashed out of the foliage of tree and into a clearing. She quickly dived into a nearby pond to erase her scent before going back into the woods. One Naruto said with a smirk of anticipation. Tora continued to push herself even as she felt her muscles tire. Zero. Ready or not here I come. Naruto called out. Tora froze as she heard Naruto's voice call out to her through the forest. She then started off with even more speed as she felt desperation fill her mind. Naruto crouched on all fours on the forest ground. He took a deep breath before disappearing in a white blur. Tora heard a crack of thunder and immediately knew that it was Naruto. She tried to speed up but her muscles refused to cooperate. Tora's eyes widened as she felt a rush of wind come flying past her. Her eyes widened even further as she saw Naruto standing in front of her. Time's up Tora, Naruto said with a grin. Tora sighed and then slowly walked up to Naruto. Naruto got down on one knee to pick up Tora. Tora suddenly leapt from the ground and attached herself onto Naruto's face. She began to scratch Naruto's face. Naruto started to scream and run around in pain as Tora continued to use his face as her own personal scratching board. Eventually Naruto jumped into the lake, forcing Tora to jump off. He quickly propped himself above the surface of the water and looked at Tora with a pissed off look on his face. What the fuck Tora? What was that for? Naruto yelled. Naruto swore he heard Tora laugh. But instead she gave a bored shrug. I don't know. Just thought it would be fun, Tora said casually. Naruto's eyes started to twitch as the anger slowly began to build up in him. Instead of releasing though, he sighed and smiled. He slowly walked up to Tora and took her in his arms. He immediately felt her loosen and cuddle into his body. He eventually heard her fall asleep. Naruto eventually found his way to his team. Kakashi was leaning against a tree reading his book while Sasuke and Sakura did their daily process of Sakura pestering Sasuke and Sasuke ignoring her. They all looked up however when they heard Tora let out a loud purr. Kakashi gave him a look which Naruto completely ignored. Sasuke and Sakura stood with anger in eyes. That cat never listened to anybody except for Naruto. 
we won't have to deal with Tora anymore, Naruto said as he continued to rub Tora. Kakashi looked shocked at the bold claim. Konoha Ninja had been dealing with Tora for years and now suddenly Naruto said they won't. Uh Naruto. I seriously doubt that. I have been catching Tora since I was a Jinan, Kakashi said. Naruto just let out a small laugh before walking past his team and towards Konoha. Kakashi shrugged and followed him. Sakura and Sasuke then followed them. After a short walk through the forest and into the village, Team 7 arrived at the Hokage Tower. After walking up the long flight of stairs, they arrived on the top floor where the Hokage Tower was located. The secretary waved them in and they stepped into the office. They saw Hiruzen leaning in his chair smoking his pipe. His eyes brightened as he saw Team 7 walk in with Tora wrapped comfortably in Naruto's arm. Akakashi. I see your team finished the mission, Hiruzen said. Kakashi nodded. Hiruzen turned on his intercom and ordered his secretary to bring in the daimyo's wife. Team 7 felt the floor beneath the shake as the daimyo's wife approached the door. The door suddenly was blasted off at hinges as the daimyo's wife. The daimyo's wife was a very heavy set woman. She was obviously used to a very extravagant lifestyle due to her weight and choice of clothes. The daimyo's wife immediately ran over to Naruto. She tried to snatch Tora out of Naruto's hands but Naruto dodged her. What is the meaning of this? The woman yelled angrily as Naruto continued to dodge her attempts to relinquish Tora from his hands. Unfortunate healthy for her, Naruto was trained in ninja arts and was not allowing her. Ah, uh, Naruto, you can give Tora back to her now, Hiruzen said nervously. He knew how easily this woman could influence the daimyo and didn't need Konoha's fun to be cut right now. Not until I have a word with this woman, Naruto said. Hiruzen looked at him as if he was crazy. Surely Naruto knew the consequences that his current actions would have on the village. It's okay Hiruzen-san. I'll teach this heathen a lesson. The woman said. She then turned to Naruto with a harsh glare in her eyes. Naruto returned the glare 20 times stronger. Now boy, you will treat me with respect. Do you know who I am? The woman said. Naruto let out a short chuckle and looked at the woman with a are you serious? Yes I know who you are and honestly I don't give a fuck. Tor is your pet. Not at all. Don't dress her up and don't strangle her with her your man arms. Don't fucking smother her with pillows and blankets, don't feed her candy, and for the love of god don't send ninja to retrieve her when all she doing is taking a stroll. She is a cat, you stupid woman. They like their freedom. And if you don't get that, don't have any more pets, Naruto said. The occupants of the room stood in shock. Nobody, and I mean nobody had ever talked to the daimyo and his family but yet Naruto had just done so. The daimyo's wife started to sputter and she tried to come up with a response. No one had ever talked to her like that, even as a child. After finding nothing to come back with, she turned to Hiruzen. My husband will be hearing about this. This boy shall be reprimanded and hardly. The woman said before roughly snatching Toro about Naruto's hand and storming out of the room. Hiruzen and the rest of Team 7 watched as she pushed her way through the lobby and towards the stairs. Hiruzen sighed as he watched the woman rush down the stairs. He then turned to Team 7. Naruto. Do you know what you just did? You may have just ended the daimyo's support to Konoha, Hiruzen said with a tone of tiredness in his voice. That bitch deserved it. That is no way to treat an animal, Naruto said. Now usually I would agree with you if it was anyone else but we're talking about the daimyo's wife. To put it frankly, the man is, whipped. If she pesters him enough, Konoha could deal with some harsh consequences, Hiruzen said. Naruto honestly really didn't care. This woman was abusing his summons kind and he would not allow that. So I will be taking three quarters of your mission income as punishment, Naruto. Hopefully this will teach you a lesson. You are dismissed for the day, Hiruzen said while returning to his paperwork. Naruto, expecting a similar punishment, looked unaffected by the harsh punishment. Kakashi did not look shocked at the punishment. He knew the consequences of Naruto's actions and expected a punish as such. Sakura and Sasuke looked shocked. Three quarters. Wasn't that a little excessive? You're dismissed for the day. Hiruzen dismissed Team 7 with a wave. Kakashi turned to his team and told them they were dismissed from training. Naruto dashed out of the door, leaving the rest of his team in the Hokage's office. Naruto dashed through the village, towards the outskirts of it. He stopped in front of a house. The house was very simple. Three stories with several several windows and a door. But to Naruto, it was his home. Naruto walked through the door and was immediately greeted to the smell of freshly made ramen. He smiled as he found his way to the kitchen. There he found Amai in an apron standing over a fresh pot of boiling water. She was humming a soft tone as she slowly spun the ladle held in her hand. 
Naruto got a sneaky grin before crouching to the ground. He slowly began to sneak towards Amai as she stood unaware of the imminent danger behind her. Naruto finally stood directly behind him and waited. Naruto suddenly scooped Amai in his arms. Amai let out a small squeak as Naruto spun her around the room. At first she was afraid but that soon disappeared when she heard Naruto's laugh. Instead she started to pout at being tricked so easily. Naruto spun her around the room several times before placing her back in the kitchen. He then took a seat at the dinner table. So how's your day been Amai-chan? Naruto asked while looking at her collect yourself. Ever since Team 7 had returned to Konoha with Amai, Amai had been slowly getting used to her new life with Naruto. Amai had been put through a psychological test conducted by a Yamanaka. After that, she had been cleared as an official civilian of Konoha. Now her days usually consisted of her working at her new job at Ikaruka's ramen and taking care of Naruto. It was relaxing. Ayame didn't have me doing much today. She still tries to baby me. How was yours? Amai said while recovering herself from Naruto's surprise attack. Boring. Did a little team training. Caught Tora. Again. Cursed out the daimyo's wife and got 75% of all my future paychecks taken away, Naruto said nonchalantly. Amai froze at the last part of the sentence. She slowly turned to Naruto with a horrified look in her eyes. What? Why in the hell did you curse out the daimyo's wife? Do you know how much trouble you could get into? Naruto. Amai screamed when she saw that Naruto seemed to be falling asleep. Naruto shot back up at the scream. Huh? What? Naruto said. Amai groaned and sighed. She should have known that Naruto wouldn't take this situation serious. Why did you threaten the daimyo's wife? Amai asked slowly. She immediately saw Naruto's face sour. That bitch was mistreating Tora. So I decided to give her a piece of my mind. I guess it didn't taste so good, Naruto said. Amai laughed at Naruto's comment. Naruto suddenly jumped out of his seat and ran towards the door. Gotta go training. Call me when the ramen is done, Naruto said while dashing towards the door. Wait Naruto. Amai suddenly heard the door slam close, signaling that Naruto had left the building. I have something for you. Amai finished. Naruto sat under a tree Indian style. His eyes were closed and he seemed to be in a heavy state of concentration. A thin layer of what seemed like yellow chakra was surrounding Naruto. The leaves around Naruto seemed to be slowly rising and falling around Naruto. Naruto slowly raised his arm and pointed a finger at the nearest leaf. Suddenly a tiny spark shot out of the and impacted against the nearest leaf. The leaf immediately crumbled into dust. The spark jumped off the crumbled leaf and found its way to the next leaf. The spark quickly managed to crumble that leaf too. By this time, a thin sheet of swear covered Naruto's head. The process continued for the next 10 minute as Naruto slowly decimated the floating leaves that surrounded him. At what seemed to be the 75th leaf, the spark went out. Naruto released a huge sigh. A quickly wiped the sweat that covered his forehead. Damn, making electricity conduct to non-conductive objects sure is a bitch. Naruto said to himself. Naruto suddenly twisted his head as he heard the soft sound of feet running against the ground. Naruto. Naruto heard Amai yelled. He looked up and saw Amai running towards him while trying to conceal something behind her back. Of course the object was larger than her so her efforts were in vain. From what Naruto could see, the object was a long metallic staff with a spiked end to it. Amai finally reached Naruto and stood in front of him shyly. Naruto. I realized that you were sad about your sword breaking and you like weapons, so I decided to get you one. Now I know you like electricity so I decided to get you this," Amai said while thrusting the weapon at Naruto almost skewering him. Naruto sweat dropped at the weird way the weapon was presented to him. He looked down and decided to inspect the weapon. The weapon immediately reminded him of a lightning rod. It had a very simple style. A four foot long metal pole with a spike tend. Naruto reached out to grab the weapon. After his hand got within several inches of the weapon, he heard it hum. He looked down and saw tendrils of what seemed like electricity come flying out of his hands and into the lighting rod. The rod suddenly came flying into Naruto's hand. Naruto automatically gripped the rod tightly as he felt the humming increase. Naruto gazed in amazement at the way the weapon was reacting to his body. He swung it attentively, trying to get a feel from the weapon. Even though the swings and thrusts were sloppy, the weapon felt nice in Naruto's hand. Amai watched nervously as Naruto looked over his new weapon. She knew that a spear-like weapon was a huge difference from Naruto's scimitar and hoped Naruto wouldn't immediately reject the gift but her hopes started to rise however when she saw the way Naruto looked at the weapon. Suddenly she saw Naruto disappear and felt herself rise into the air. 
She felt two strong appendages wrap around her and spin her several times. I love it. Thank you so much Amai-chan, Naruto said while spinning Amai around in their backyard. A small blush covered Amai as she realized how Naruto was holding her. Her blush was short-lived however when Naruto dropped her near the house. This is perfect. It feels, just so right in my hands, Naruto said while staring at his new weapon. Amai grinned at the fact that Naruto appreciated her gift. Good. Also the ramen is ready. I'll go in and start making our bowls, Amai said while walking back to the house with a slight skip in her step. Naruto watched with a happy grin as Amai skipped into the house. As soon as the door shut behind her, Naruto's grin fell. He quickly spun around with his new weapon poised in his hands. He started pointedly at a certain part of the forest. You have three seconds to get out of that tree or I will burn you and all of your little friends, Naruto said. Naruto heard nothing and a light grin spread across his face. One Naruto still heard and saw nothing. Two Naruto grin started to slowly grow as no one came out of the trees. Th Naruto saw a slight rustling of the leaves. He saw a young boy jump out of the tree and landed in front of him. Naruto recognized the boy from the academy. He was Shino Aburame. If one were to look closely, they would see tiny insects crawl in and out of Shino's skin. How long have you been aware of my presence? Shino asked in a monotone voice. Naruto walked up to Shino with his new weapon still poised to strike. A smirk seemed to be etched on his face. I don't think you are in the position to ask questions. What I want to know is why the hell you have been spying on me? Naruto asked. Shino remained quiet for several seconds as Naruto continued to circle him. Eventually Naruto grew tired of waiting. He thrust his sword at Shino. Shino tried to jump back but felt himself hit something. He looked up and saw a clone of Naruto standing behind him. The clone shot his hands up and grabbed Shino. Naruto grinned as his clone successfully captured Shino. Shino briefly struggled in the clone's grip but soon found out that the clone was too strong. Naruto placed the spiked end of the rod several centimeters from Shino's chest. Now I am going to ask you this once more. Why the hell were you spying on me? Naruto said. Shino remained quiet for several more seconds. Naruto, seeing this, started to slowly move the rod towards Shino. That finally got Shino to start talking. My bugs sensed a larger than normal chakra signal coming from this training ground. We were surprised to find out it was another one of my classmates. We were spying on you because it is important for a ninja to know information about their teammates and enemies, Shino said in a clam and even voice. Naruto nodded at the explanation and lowered his weapon. He snapped his fingers and the clone dismissed itself in a small shower of sparks. I accept your explanation. Now get the fuck out of my backyard, Naruto said while walking towards his house. Shino remained standing where he was as Naruto continued his journey back to his house. Uzumaki-san. Shino voice rang out. Naruto stopped in his walking. He turned around and saw Shino still standing in the same position. What? Naruto asked curiously. I would just like to inform you that I am nothing like my other classmates. I have seen the way the villagers treat you and I find it very illogical, Shino said. Naruto looked confused at the sudden confession. He really never expected any of his classmates to admit anything like this. While it was true he didn't have much interaction with Shino, he was truly surprised by the statement. And why are you telling me this? Naruto asked cautiously. My bugs and I have sensed a very deep power inside of you. I have a feeling that you will be a great ally to have in the future. I am just merely taking the beginning steps to becoming allies, Shino said before disappearing into a cloud of bugs. Naruto watched as the bugs flew into the forest and disappeared from his sight. Did I just make a friend? Naruto asked himself. No, dumbass. He is obviously using you, Kyuubi said. Naruto shrugged at Shino's and Kyuubi's comments. He decided to put the two in the back of his mind and go get some ramen. Naruto ran through the forest of death with a small grin on his face. Every couple of seconds a loud feminine laugh rang through the forest, informing him he was still betrayed. Naruto grin spread even further as he increased his speed. Naruto was jumping from tree to tree, trying to throw of his pursuing. He suddenly heard the sound of a kunai slicing through the air. He veered right, just in time too because 20 kunai crashed into his previous position. Naruto stuck to a nearby tree and took a quick look at his surroundings. While he was looking, he didn't notice the quiet sizzling of paper bomb. The tree exploded, throwing Naruto to the forest floor and showering him in splinters. The paper bomb left him dazed and confused. Naruto closed his eyes and groaned in pain as thousands of splinters rained on him. He tried to get up but found that his arms were pinned and a foreign weight was upon him. His eyes shot open and he found Anko's grinning face staring at him. Looks like I win once again Narukun, 
Anko said with a mischievous tone in her voice. Naruto gave a sigh of defeat and gave a small grin. One of these days, I'll beat you Anko-chan. One of these days, Naruto said. Anko grinned and then lowered her head closer to Naruto's. In your dreams Gaki, Anko said softly. Naruto let out a small chuckle before lifting his head to kiss Anko. She slowly lowered hers to meet his. The two were centimeters away from each other before a loud blaring noise interrupted them. Naruto shot up from his bed in a defensive position, covered in sweat. He looked around and saw the cause of the noise was his alarm clock. He gave a sigh of defeat before shutting off his alarm clock. He swung his legs over his bed and sat in a hunched position on his bed. Anko-chan, Naruto whispered while fingering the Anko's necklace. A single tear fell from his eye. Naruto schedule soon start to repeat. It would go something like this, get up, eat, go to his team, get a mission or two, team training, come home, eat, train and sleep. Every once in a while Shino would show up and the two would have conversations about one another's team and their training. From what Naruto had gathered, Shino's team was made for tracking. Their training consisted of finding and capturing a large array of targets that started with Tora and ending with catching their sensei. But now Naruto was in the middle of sparring with his team. The team was Sakura and Sasuke versus Naruto. Kakashi had immediately deemed Naruto too skilled to go one-on-one -on -one with any of his teammates, which angered Sasuke a lot. Naruto sighed as he lazily ducked under a stray kunai while blocking a low kick from Sasuke. While Naruto admitted he was a huge reason for it, Team 7 was pathetic. Their actions did not complement each other and would most likely get each other killed if put in group combat. Naruto grabbed Sakura and flipped her over his shoulder. He then quickly did a high front flip in order to dodge the rushing Sasuke. Sakura landed on Sasuke and the two were sent tumbling on the ground. Naruto landed softly on the ground and watched as his two teammates struggled to get up from the ground. Ma that's enough for today. Plus I think our guest would like to see Naruto. Naruto heard Kakashi say. Naruto turned around and saw an Anbu standing next to Kakashi. The Anbu had a pigeon mask on. Naruto-san, Hokage-sama requests your presence. He says it is of high importance. The Anbu said. Naruto sighed and lowered from his defensive stance. He walked up to the Anbu and stood next to him. He was however surprised when the Anbu hesitated to shunshine to the office. He looked up in clear surprise. The Anbu looked down at him and Naruto could basically see the nervousness painted across the man's face. I have heard stories of other Anbu who have attempted to shunshine without your permission. I wish not to repeat their misfortune. The Anbu said in an even, voice. Naruto let out a short laugh before signaling that it was okay for the Anbu to touch him. The Anbu quickly grabbed his shoulder and the two disappeared in flash of wind and leaves. As soon as Naruto's vision settled he knew he was fucked. There stood the Daimyo with his wife by his side. The Daimyo looked very annoyed while his wife looked anxious. As soon as Naruto came into her sight, her eyes flared in anger and she turned to her husband. That's the boy. He badmouthed me and stole Tora. He has probably been torturing my Tora-kun. The woman said. Naruto understood the first part but not the second part. He hadn't seen Tora since that day. Uzumaki-san is this true? The Daimyo said. Now usually Naruto, in the face of authority, would be polite. However this woman had just accused him of kidnapping and hurting a feline. And that wasn't going to slide with him. No it is not true. I haven't seen Tora chan since I retrieved her for your animal abusing wife. I would also appreciate that if your ignorant wife would not accuse me of abusing any animals, Naruto said. In the background Hiruzen gave a loud resounding face bomb. He had figured Naruto would react to this but hope he would be able to control himself. Obviously it didn't go like that. Excuse me. Do you know who I am? You disrespectful little brat? I demand you immediately take back those insults and tell us where Tora is. The daimyo yelled. The three ninja that stood behind the daimyo got into an offensive in front of the daimyo. Naruto scoffed at the daimyo's demand. I know exactly who you are and I honestly don't care. Your wife insulted and that gave me the grounds to insult her back. The fact that you don't understand that make me question your competency as a daimyo. And once again I didn't steal Tora, Naruto said. One of the three ninja with a weird kanji on his headband went to grab Naruto. As soon as he laid his hands on Naruto, he was screwed. Naruto slightly increased his chakra output which also increased the amount of electricity that was coming off his skin. As soon as the ninja put his hands on Naruto, 20,00 volts were sent coursing through his body. It was only due to his chakra and past experiences with lightning release that saved him. That brat attacked one of your ninja. Arrest him. The daimyo's wife said. 
The daimyo's personal ninja surrounded Naruto while the Anbu did the same. Hiruzen watched with a sweat drop as the situation continued to unravel. Actually I did not attack anyone. Your ninja put his hands on me. I have a special condition that makes me secrete a massive amount of electricity. As soon as he put his hands on me, he was screwed. And if you would allow me to talk, I would have told you I may have an idea where Tora is, Naruto said. This immediately caught the attention of everyone in the room. See. This boy kidnapped Tora. That's the way he could know where Tora is. The woman yelled once again. Naruto sighed and grabbed the bridge of his nose as the ninja once again surrounded him. Or maybe, just maybe, I have been hunting Tora for months and know all of her favorite hiding spots, Naruto said. He then quickly swiped his hand over his seal and unsealed a paper and pencil. He wrote down several coordinates which he gave to the Anbu. If you check these, I bet you would find her, Naruto said. The Anbu looked at the daimyo and he showed them away with a wave of his hand. The Anbu left the office leaving Naruto with the Hokage, the daimyo and his wife. An awkward silence occupied the room. So Naruto-kun how has your training been? Hiruzen asked as if his boss wasn't standing in front of him. Naruto grinned. Pretty good. My teammates aren't much of a challenge but on the rare occasions Kakashi fights me, it's challenging. Haven't really learned much though, Naruto said. Hiruzen nodded knowing that Kakashi wasn't the best hands-on teacher. The Hokage and Naruto continued to have a conversation for several minutes as the daimyo and his wife stood there awkwardly. Finally after what seemed like hours to the couple, the Anbu revealed themselves with a pissed off Tora in one of their hands. The daimyo's wife beamed in happiness. Tora-chan she said while running towards the Anbu. Tora let out a loud hiss before jumping toward Naruto. Naruto caught her and quickly hid her from the enraged woman. What are you doing you brat? Give me Tora, she yelled. Naruto shook his head negative. No. It's obvious she doesn't want to stay with you so why not let her go? Why can't you just leave her alone? Naruto pleaded to the ignorant woman. Unfortunately she completely blocked that out. Because it is my pet. She should obey me. The crazed woman said. At this point Naruto was getting pissed. The way that woman had referred to Tora as an it had really pissed Naruto off. Tora is a she and is a living creature. She has her own consciousness and can make her own decisions, Naruto said. Suddenly he got an idea. If you believe Tora loves you so much let her choose. I will place her on the floor and if she goes to you, she obviously wants to stay with you. If she goes to me then she wants to be with me, Naruto said. Fine. I know my Tora-chan loves me. The woman said. Naruto grinned and revealed Tora from behind his back. He walked to the center of the room and placed her on the floor. He then took several long strides back and looked at Tora patiently. Tora looked in between Naruto and the daimyo's wife. A look of hesitation was seen in her eyes. Suddenly she let out an audible sigh as she started to slowly trot towards the woman. The daimyo's wife visibly beamed as Tora got closer. Suddenly Tora stopped walking towards the woman and turned. She lifted her leg and a stream of pee came shooting from behind her. The pee impacted against the woman's face causing her to recoil in disgust. Tora, after revealing her bladder, trotted over to Naruto and jumped into his arms. Her eyes had a level of smugness that spoke volumes about how she felt about her actions. The daimyo's wife had finally managed to wipe off the surprising amount of pee off her face and looked at Tora in shock. Slowly the shock turned to anger. Fine. You can have that ungrateful cat. I can replace her with an animal who is a hundred times better. The woman said before charging towards the door. She opened it roughly and slammed it behind her as she stomped through the tower. The occupants of the room stood awkwardly as they could hear the stomps of the angry woman through the tower. Naruto-san. The daimyo said. Hiruzen and Naruto sighed expecting a punishment. Pissing off the daimyo's wife probably wasn't the best idea. Thank you. The man said while hugging Naruto. Streams of tears slowly slid down the man's cheek as he continued to hug Naruto. Naruto stood there awkwardly as the man continued to cry. He patted him on the back once to make sure he was okay. After several minutes of awkward man hugging, the daimyo let go. You have no idea how many times I have been trying to separate that woman from Tora. I tried freeing her from her cage but you ninja always managed to catch her. But now she can be free. The daimyo said. The daimyo then crouched down and looked at Tora. I hope you enjoy your freedom Tora, he said. His face suddenly turned serious before looking at Hiruzen. He gave a short nod before starting to walk out of the door. This will be all Hiruzen have a good day, he said before shutting the door behind him. Naruto and Hiruzen stood in the office looking at each other in shock. Tor had fallen asleep in Naruto's arm. Well that was unexpected. But it turned out better than I thought it would, Hiruzen said. 
He then grabbed a piece of paper from seemingly out of nowhere before burning it. You can have your full paycheck back, Hiruzen said. Naruto nodded happy that he could actually save up money now. He then saw Hiruzen pull out a piece of paper with a glint in his eyes. Let's celebrate with a mission. Hiruzen leaned down and pressed a button on his intercom. Kuzi-chan, please send Tazuna-san in and get Wolf-san to get Team 7. Naruto always thought that the third Hokage loved him. This thought was solidified when he awoke from his slight mental breakdown only to be comforted by him. Sometimes there was tough love but it was still love. But after having to deal with a drunk bridge builder and his very annoying teammates, Naruto thought that Hiruzen was purposefully trying to make his life hell. He wondered if it was payback for doing the same thing to him after having a month break from all ninja duty, Naruto managed to return to normal. Now this by no means meant he was rid of all of his sadness. Anko's death was still a major source of his nightmare. But now he was able to deal with it. To his teammates he was back to the same old, Naruto. But oh the inside he was changed completely. It had all started when Hiruzen had called in his team and the bridge builder named Tazna. Tazna had immediately complained about the team, saying he didn't want a little girl, an emo, a wannabe monk and a cyclops protecting him. Of course he was silent when his bottle of liquor suddenly exploded into several sharp shards of which one came very close to his genitals. Yeah that shut him up. The mission was to escort Tazuna to Nami. Easy enough right? No. Tazuna made the mission even harder by him being drunk. Sakura would ask almost what seemed to be an endless amount of question which Tazuna would ask with a drunken slur that literally grind against Naruto's eardrums. Kakashi chose to ignore the trio in favor of his book while Sasuke seemed to be lost in his own thoughts. This is where we left our hero. We find him traveling along a long dirt word that was surrounded by trees. Tazuna walked in the center of the group as he continued to sip on his seemingly endless bottle of liquor. Sakura continued to ask him questions about his homeland that Tazuna would half answer with slurs of what could only be guessed to be words. Naruto had been since started to ignore the duo and started to play with his new lightning rod. He would throw it in the air and make it float using his magnetic powers. Sasuke would sometime glance up at Naruto before returning to his thought. Kakashi continued with his regular routine of reading his pornographic book while ignoring his students. As the group continued to travel down the road, Naruto saw something that was very weird. Two small puddles stood in the middle of the road. Now normally this wouldn't be a weird occurrence but the fire country had been having a mini drought for the past two weeks. So those puddles are either a genjutsu or someone is fucking with us, Naruto said. Naruto heard QB grumbling within his seal. It wouldn't be hard to fuck with you, considering your very very minuscule intelligence, QB said. Naruto pouted at the insult before focusing back on the weird puddles. Naruto looked up towards Kakashi and did not see him reacting to the puddle. He looked over to his teammates and saw the same. Naruto didn't relax though. The group passed by the puddle with no intrusion. Naruto started to relax before he heard a slight change of the wind. He turned around only to see Kakashi getting wrapped in chains that were coming from two look-alike ninja. The ninja pulled on the chains and Naruto exploded in a shower of flesh and blood. Naruto heard Sakura scream and heard Tazuna and Sasuke gasp. Naruto watched as the two ninja recoiled their chains and readied them for another attack. Naruto grinned and hefted his lightning rod. The two ninja charged towards them with their connected chains ready to attack. Naruto, with an amazing amount of strength, threw his rod in the small loop that connected the two ninja. The rod flew through the loop and got caught on it and embedded itself on a tree. The two ninja were thrown to the ground at the sudden stop of momentum. Naruto disappeared from their sights and reappeared on top of one of the ninja. In his hand was a ball of what could be best described as white lightning. Naruto thrust the ball of lightning into the ninja's face. The ninja screamed as his face was melted off by. Naruto continued to shove the ball of lightning as the ninja body was melted by the extreme heat that the ball of lightning was creating. Eventually Naruto backed off and took time to enjoy his handiwork. Only a tiny bit of melted flesh and a burnt skull remained of the ninja's face. Naruto grinned and turned to the other downed and now shocked ninja. The ninja quickly shook himself out of his shock and disconnected himself from the chain that connected him to his dead comrade. He dropped into an offensive stance as Naruto approached him. The ninja suddenly lifted his claw as five kunai impacted against it. He looked towards where the kunai came from he saw Sasuke preparing another round of kunai. The ninja prepared to dodge the kunai. Momentarily taking his focus off of Naruto. And that was his final mistake. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of the ninja in a burst of speed and socked him across the jaw. Before the ninja lost his consciousness, he felt his jaw break into several pieces and knew he had a concussion. Naruto stood over the down ninja with his fist covered in electricity. Sasuke gave him the evil eye. 
Naruto returned the gesture with a cheeky smile. He then unsealed a spool of ninja wire and started to tie up the enemy ninja. KKK Kakashi Sensei died, Sakura said still in shock. Naruto laughed inwardly at the girl's shocked appearance. He could sense the electric pulses that made up Kakashi's nervous system several feet away in a forage of trees. He had figured that Kakashi had faked his death in order to test how the three would handle the ninja. Kakashi isn't dead. He's over there in those bushes, Naruto said while pointing towards a random bush. Sakura and Sasuke looked towards the bush and saw Kakashi walk out of it with a sheepish look in his eyes. Sasuke and Sakura looked stunned at the sudden appearance of their dead sensei. They suddenly turned towards the spot where their sensei supposedly died and were surprised. They saw a cut up piece of log and several empty packets of blood tapped onto the log. Kakashi used his student's distraction to approach Dazuna with a pissed off look in his eye. Dazuna started to back away slowly but ran into a tree, trapping him. Kakashi got within inches of Tazuna and grabbed him roughly by the scruff of his jacket. Now Tazuna. Would you mind explaining to me why 2B rank ninja attacked us on a low danger C rank mission? Kakashi asked. Dazuna gulped and started to stutter out an answer but all Kakashi got from it was a garble of unintelligible words. Kakashi sighed and dropped Tazuna. Dazuna let out a sigh that was mixed with relief and defeat. My country is currently in the grip of the shipping tycoon Gato's grip. He has been slowly sucking the money out of wave. Please I beg of you to continue this mission. Dazuna asked. Kakashi continued to give Tazuna a scrutinizing look as Tazuna begged for them to continue. After several seconds, he let out a sigh of defeat. Unfortunately Tazuna I cannot allow my newly made Janan go on a possible A-rank mission. You are free to return to Konoha with us but we cannot continue this mission, Kakashi said. Kakashi turned and signaling his students to follow him as he headed back towards Konoha. Kakashi heard Tazuna sigh from behind him. Sorry Kakashi-san but I cannot go back with you. My country needs me and I can't abandon them just because you won't guard me. I guess this is where go our separate ways, Tazuna said. Kakashi sighed with guilt but did not turn around. Sakura, Sasuke started to follow him but Naruto stayed. Naruto was currently having an internal argument with QB. You should go. You may meet some new opponents you can kill, QB said. Yeah, but I would have to protect someone. That would be boring, Naruto said childishly. Naruto heard QB release an angry growl. Go on the mission. I cannot stand to watch you do nothing anymore. You have almost killed me with your constant whining about your lost lover and your uselessness. So stop whining and go on the fucking mission, QB said. Naruto growled at the mention of Anko but remained strong. No I will not go, Naruto said. Yes you will, QB said. No I will not. Yes you will. No. Yes. No. Boy if you don't follow that bridge builder, I will pump you so full of my chakra that you will lose yourself to insanity and destroy this planet, QB said. Naruto remained quiet at the proclamation. You can do that? Naruto asked. QB let out a deep laugh. I don't know but I guess now would be a good time to try now wouldn't, QB said. Naruto suddenly had a massive headache as an influx of QB's chakra rushed into his system. Naruto tried to cap it but QB's will was too strong. Eventually Naruto growled in defeat, knowing he was beat. Fine. I'll go. Naruto screamed out loud. The rest of Team 7 and Tazuna looked at Naruto in confusion. Naruto's sweat dropped when he realized that he had spoken out loud. Naruto turned to Kakashi as he felt Kyuubi's chakra retreat through from his system. Kakashi Sensei, I cannot allow myself to abandon Tazuna in his time of need. Regardless of your choice, I will be going with Tazuna, Naruto sighed. Kakashi's eyes narrowed at Naruto's disobedience. Naruto, what you are doing is treason. Are you going to disobey my orders? Kakashi said with a sharp edge in his voice. Naruto shook his head negatively. No, I'm just obeying the little voice in my head. It's currently telling me to help Tazuna out, Naruto said. Kakashi continued to look at Naruto with a sharp look in his eye which Naruto returned at full force. The two continued to have a fierce stare off as the three pedestrians could feel the tension thicken in the air. Suddenly Kakashi let out a loud groan while Naruto gained a victorious grin. Well it looks like we will have to protect Tazna. I cannot leave one of my Janan alone, Kakashi said to Sakura and Sasuke. Kakashi then turned to Tazna. Once the mission is complete, you will be paying the equivalent of IA rank mission Tazna-san, Kakashi said. Tazna nodded enthusiastically, happy that he won't have to go alone anymore. Of course Kakashi-san. My town would love to compensate you for your efforts, Tazna said. Kakashi nodded and signaled Tazna to continue leading them towards Wave. Team 7 followed. 
Team 7 and Tazana had continued their journey to Wave Country. They had just got finished being chartered across a lake that separated Fire Country and Wave Country. There they got a glimpse of the bridge Tazana was building. The size of the bridge was tremendous. It looked to be three quarters of the way complete. The boat owner dropped the group off on the shores of Wave Country. The group had started to make their way deeper and deeper into it. As soon as Naruto landed on the shores of Wave Country, he felt that something was wrong. The amount of mist that greeted them was unnatural even though they were on the shores of a lake. The air was also filled with chakra, as if a ninja had just had a battle here. Also Naruto had the feeling as if he was being watched by more than one person. It was not a feeling Naruto enjoyed. The group continued to walk through the totally not creepy misty forest. Naruto was inspecting his lightning rod before he saw some shuffling in the leaves. He quickly hefted the sword and sent it flying into the bushes. The rest of the group turned to look at him as went to check in the bushes. Naruto parted the bush to reveal a terrified white rabbit and his lightning rod inches away from piercing its body. Naruto heard a shriek and saw Sakura come rushing past him. She scooped the rabbit into her arms and started to mother her. She then turned to Naruto and gave him a dirty look. What the hell Naruto? You almost killed this rabbit, Sakura said. Naruto ignored the girl in favor of inspecting his lightning rod. Now usually Kakashi would have noticed the gigantic sword that was currently flying through the air towards his students. He had just gotten a new book and came to a particularly good part. But luckily for him, Naruto was slightly more aware. The oversized sword came within inches from Sakura's neck before suddenly veering right. The blade barely avoided Sakura's neck and went flying into Naruto's hand. You know it's not nice to throw weapons at others. It could hurt someone, Naruto said. Naruto heard a deep chuckling as the mist around him started to thicken. Team 7 got into a triangle position around Tazana as the mist thickened to the point where no one could see within inches in front of them. That was a nice catch boy. I am surprised a brat like you could even lift that thing. The voice echoed again. Naruto grinned and slammed the sword into the ground. He grabbed his lightning rod with one hand and prepared it. Yeah well I am not your ordinary brat, Naruto said. More chuckling came echoing through the mist. A sudden chill ran down Naruto's spine. Eight places. Liver, lungs, spine, clavicle vein, neck vein, brain, kidneys and heart. So many choices. Zabuza's voice ranged through the mist. Team 7 tightened their position around Tazana as the mist increased to the point where one could not see their own hand if it was put right in front of them. Sasuke hands started to shake violently as he attempted to tighten the weak grip he had on his kunai. The mist and the massive amount of killer intent that was being blasted at him was bringing up old memories. The memories of his clan being slain came flying into his mind. Their dead and lifeless body were a stark contrast to their horror-stricken eyes. Finally the memories of his parents' bodies, stained with blood came to him. His brother standing over them with his Sharingan activated, staring at him with his emotionless eyes. The memories were too much for Sasuke. I I I can't take it anymore, Sasuke yelled. Sasuke's hand came flying towards his neck as he attempted to kill himself. Sasuke stopped however when he felt a small spark originate on his shoulder. He tried to move his arm but found that he couldn't move it. He looked towards his shoulder to find Naruto's hand on it. Stop being a pussy Sasuke. Naruto simply said. This quickly snapped Sasuke out of his suicidal stupor as he growled at the insult. Naruto smirked and prepared his lightning rod with his other hand. Aw it looks like the little boys want to play ninja. How cute. Zabuza's voice ranged out. The members of Team 7 waited with bated breath as silence permeated the area. Sakura was shaking from head to toe. The massive amount of killer intent was getting to her. Coming from a civilian clan, she had never felt this kind of killer intent. It was a surprise that she was actually able to stay conscious right now. Her eyes were darting right to left in an attempt to find Zabuza's location. It was because of this that she didn't see Zabuza suddenly appear behind her and break into their formation. She heard a scream come from Tazuna and turned. She saw Zabuza preparing to cleave Tazuna in two. She released a scream as Zabuza's sword came down on Tazuna. The sword cleaved through Tazuna in a spray of blood and guts that covered the surrounding members. Zabuza's bloodthirsty, victorious grin was a stark contrast the horror-stricken look of the majority of Team 7. Sakura had tears in her eyes as she was literally covered in the blood of her client. Sasuke was frozen in his place as the memories of the clan massacre once again were triggered by the massive amount of blood. Kakashi looked shocked and mad at the fact that Zabuzo had managed to slip through his guard so easily. And Naruto? Actually where was Naruto? A spear suddenly ripped through Zabuza's chest. He eyes widened in shock as he felt his body being pumped full of lightning chakra. 
He looked back and saw Naruto behind him with his lightning rod currently thrusted through his chest. He had a wild grin on his face. Looks like the brat one, Naruto said. Naruto was surprised however when Zabuza started to smirk. Naruto suddenly looked down towards his rod and saw that instead of blood, Zabuza was bleeding water. Naruto growled angrily and started to pump chakra into his lightning rod. Zabuza body started to enlarge as a massive amount of lightning chakra was pumped into him. After several seconds, he then exploded in a spray of water. Naruto growled as he shouldered his rod. He looked at his sensei who was now looking to be contemplating whether to run or fight. That was actually pretty easy. I expected more the Kakashi of the Sharingan. Zabuza's voice ranged out again. Kakashi growled and then looked towards his Janan. Start to retreat. Be mindful of the area around you. I will hold him off before meeting up with you, Kakashi said. Suddenly Zabuza's laugh rung out once again. Oh don't think this will be so easy. You have quite the bounty on your head that I think he would enjoy greatly. Plus I'm pretty sure Gato likes little girls and boys, Kakashi said. Naruto blanched at the crude comment while Sasuke and Sakura shivered. Kakashi growled as he realized that his students couldn't make their escape without at least one of them getting killed. Stay here and getting into formation to watch each other's back and do not break formation, Kakashi said while sliding his hand up to his headband. He lifted it and revealed a fully matured Sharingan. Kakashi turned to the mist and started to go through a short chain of hand signs. He took a deep breath before shouting. Wind style, great breakthrough, Kakashi shouted. A giant gust of wind shot out of Kakashi's mouth. The wind blew the mist apart, making the area more visible. Kakashi looked around the battlefield and was confused when he couldn't find Zabuza. He then suddenly grabbed a kunai from his pouch and blocked a side attack from Zabuza. Kakashi was pushed back several feet as Zabuza's giant sword slammed into his kunai. Kakashi suddenly jumped back and threw his slightly dented kunai towards Zabuza. Zabuza hefted his sword and blocked the kunai. When he dropped the sword his eyes widened as he saw a dragon made of pure fire coming towards him. The dragon slammed into him causing a massive fireball. When the fireball dissipated, all it revealed was a slightly steaming puddle. Kakashi looked around and saw Zabuza standing on a lake while going through a chain of hand signs. Zabuza suddenly stopped and the water under him started to shift. The head of a dragon rose out of the water and released a roar that literally shook the lake. The rest of the dragon rose and coiled around the Zabuza. Zabuza released the hand sign and raised his sword. He then pointed it at Kakashi. The dragon released one more might roar before charging at Kakashi. Kakashi sighed before charging at full speed towards the dragon. The dragon opened its jaws to an extreme level and dove towards Kakashi. The dragon crashed down onto Kakashi's position causing a massive amount of water to be thrown into the air. Zabuza watched curiously as the water was washed away to reveal that Kakashi was no longer there. His eyes suddenly widened however when he saw the surface of the lake below him start to bubble. Kakashi busted through the lake's surface with his fist prepared to deal a massive uppercut. The uppercut connected and sent him flying up into the air. Zabuza righted himself in mid-air and started to go through several hand signs. He landed solidly on the water's surface and finished his hand signs. He slammed his palms on the water. Before him a giant wave raised from the depths of the lake. The wave continued to grow until it was two stories high. Zabuza raised his hand from the water and thrusted his hand towards Kakashi. The wave shot forward towards Kakashi at slow speeds, slowing building itself up and up. Kakashi's eyes widened as the two-story wave turned five. The wave sped towards Kakashi. The wave was too big to dodge only leaving Kakashi one option. Kakashi quickly stopped sending the chakra to his feet and sunk into the water. The wave crashed into Kakashi's previous position forcing him deeper into the water. Kakashi started to send chakra into his lungs to increase his breathing. He then began to slowly swim back up to the surface. As Kakashi got closer to the surface, he noticed that it was becoming increasingly harder to swim. Why is the water so heavy? Kakashi thought to himself. As he continued to swim, the water around him started to get harder and harder for him to swim him. When he realized what was happening, it was too late. Oh shit. Kakashi thought to himself as he was completely encased in a bubble in water. He watched as the bubble slowly raised of the lake's depth and saw that Zabuza was the one encasing him in the bubble. Kakashi immediately began to struggle in the bubble as he tried to find a way out. Unfortunately for him, Zabuza had been prepared. Zabuza had reinforced the bubble with his chakra, making it almost impossible for him to escape by himself. After several seconds of struggling, Kakashi realized he wasn't going to escape. He looked towards his team and started to make hand signals towards them. On the beach, the remains of Team 7 received the hand signals. 
their basics translation were something along the lines of this, get the fuck out of here. Naruto scoffed at the signal, Sasuke looked like he had mixed feelings and Sakura looked like she really wanted to go through with the order. The decision was made for them however when they felt a massive amount of killer intent somehow appear behind them. They turned around and saw that Azabuza clone was currently standing behind them. Sasuke and Sakura slipped into a defensive stance while Naruto prepared his lightning rod. Looks like the little brat still want a play ninja. The clone said. The clone then lifted his sword and swung it downwards towards the group. Team 7 scattered as the sword crashed into their previous position. Sasuke landed and immediately start to launch a wave of kunai at the clone. The clone tensed his legs and jumped over the wave. While in midair, the clone went through a chain of hand signs and spit out several bullets of water at each shinan. One of the bullets managed to clip Sasuke's shoulder sending him spiraling into a tree. Another water bullet hit Sakura, sending her flying several feet. Naruto began to go through a chain of hand signs as a water bullet sped towards him. He finished as the bullet was only several yards away from him. Lightning release, dragon's roar, Naruto said. Naruto then took a deep breath and released a powerful roar that was filled with lightning chakra. The roar ripped apart the water bullet and sped towards the Zabuza clone. The clone raised its sword to block the roar but the roar was too powerful. The roar sent the Zabuza flying several yards into a tree, making it disperse in a cloud of smoke. Naruto grinned for a brief seconds before remembering his injured teammates. He sighed and made a clone to go check on his teammates. He had a demon to slay and wouldn't allow his teammates incompetence to hold him back. Zabuza had an intrigued look as Naruto faced him. He watched as Naruto entered a crouched position. Zabuza became even more intrigued as a visible amount of electricity began to dance around Naruto in an intricate pattern. The electricity continued to circle Naruto's crouch form as he prepared for his attack. It took Zabuza every single ounce of his battle experience and instincts for him to dodge Naruto. Zabuza felt a humongous rush of wind come slamming towards. He had to turn his head away just to avoid from being temporarily blinded. When he looked back, he saw an airborne Naruto several inches away from him, ready to pierce him with his lightning rod. Zabuza was forced to duck and roll to avoid the attack, removing his hand from Kakashi's prison. When he got up from the roll, he was immediately confronted by a free Kakashi. Zabuza began to engage Kakashi in a Taijutsu fight. But as the fight started to drag out, Zabuza started to notice something. Kakashi had begun to start blocking more and more of his attacks. Eventually it got to the point where Kakashi was blocking and countering each one, of his attacks. Stop copying me you monkey, Zabuza said. Kakashi gave a small eye smile before ducking under a vicious punch by Zabuza. While in his guard, Kakashi managed to land a heavy uppercut on Zabuza. Zabuza was sent flying back dozens of yards. While in midair he managed to right himself and began a chain of hand signs. Kakashi noticed and started to go through the same hand signs. When Zabuza landed, they both finished the chain of hand signs. Water style, water dragon bullet technique. Kakashi and Zabuza yelled. The surface of the water shook as two massive dragons made of water busted through it. The two dragons gave a final roar before charging at each other. Zabuza's dragon opened its maw in an attempt to complete swallow Kakashi's. Zabuza was shocked however when Kakashi's dragon flew complete through his, making his attack useless and putting him in the way of a giant dragon made of water. Due to him being shocked, Zabuza had no time to react to the literal speeding dragon towards him. The dragon slammed into him, blowing him back several hundred feet, through several trees before stopping after running into a particularly strong tree. Kakashi quickly shunshined towards the down Zabuza and prepared a kunai. Zabuza looked up at Kakashi with a scarred look in his eye. Can you see the fu Zabuza was suddenly cut off when several senbon came flying out the trees and hit Zabuza in the neck. He suddenly slumped over as if he was dead. Kakashi looked shocked but did not lower his guard. He looked towards the direction where the senbon came from and say a mist hunter nin coming out of the trees with its hand raised. I'm sorry to take your kill but I have been tracking this for weeks. The hunter nin said in a neutral voice. Kakashi still looked guarded though. He kneeled down and checked Zabuza pulse. When he felt nothing, he finally relaxed. He stood back up and looked at the Hunter Nin. Thank you for assistance Hunter Nin-san, Kakashi said. The Hunter Nin nodded before grabbing Zabuza and disappearing. Kakashi's eyes narrowed at this but quickly returned to normal. He started to make his way over the lake and back to his team. After several minutes of walking, he arrived at his shock Jinan team. They were still covered in the blood of their fallen client. Kakashi sighed and confronted his team. Well since our client has died, our mission is a failure. We must return home to inform the Hokage, Kakashi said. 
He turned to Naruto however when he heard him laughing. Kakashi Sensei, you're not the only one who can use a Henjin substitution, Naruto said. Naruto then waved his hand towards a patch of especially heavy foliage. The thick brush of bushes suddenly disappeared in a cloud of smoke to reveal a Naruto clone and a scared Tazna. The Naruto clone waved a Team 7 before dispersing itself in a cloud of smoke. Well guys since our client is actually alive we can con Kakashi. Suddenly fell to the ground with a loud thud. Team 7 plus Tazana watched awkwardly as Kakashi slept on the forest floor. He let out a particularly loud snore that made Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke and Tazana sweat dropped. Tazana how far is it to your house? Naruto asked. About half a mile. Well I'm not carrying him. I say you should rape her. I'm not fucking raping my client's daughter dumbass. It has been about half an hour since Kakashi defeated Zabuza and fainted. And Naruto has been becoming more and more frustrated ever since Kakashi's fainting spell. First it all started off with who would carry Kakashi. Sakura thought it was too strenuous while Sasuke just plain didn't want to do it. After 15 minutes of arguing, Naruto just said fuck it and made a clone. Finally, when Team 7 had arrived at Tezuna's home, Naruto thought he could finally get a break from the constant annoyance of teammates. Instead as soon as he laid eyes on Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter, Kyuubi demanded he mate with her. You know it's a good idea, Kyuubi said. I'm just going to ignore you now. Naruto was snapped out of his conversation with Kyuubi by someone shaking his shoulder. He looked up and saw a concerned Tsunami shaking him. Is something wrong Tsunami-san? Naruto asked. No. I was just informing you that your sensei is awake and wants you guys, Tsunami said. Naruto nodded his head and watched as Tsunami left the room. He sighed and stood up from his spot. He walked up the stairs and entered the room where his sensei was supposed to be resting. He entered it to find Kakashi sitting propped up against the wall and his two teammates standing besides him. Kakashi looked up when he heard Naruto enter the room. Good now that Naruto's had arrived we can start, Kakashi said while staring at his team. Due to my overusage of my Sharingan, I'm suffering a severe case of chakra exhaustion. This will render me impaired for about the next two weeks, Kakashi said. Sakura suddenly gained a confused look at this. Then what's the problem Kakashi sensei? Since Zabuza is dead I doubt someone else will be chasing after us so we should have nothing to worry about? Sakura said. Kakashi sighed and then lowered his head. Zabuza is not dead, Kakashi said. Silence permeated the room as the information sunk in. What? What do you mean he isn't dead? Sakura yelled. At the end of our battle I was tired and was suffering under the effects of chakra exhaustion. This caused me not to notice two important thing. First the Hunter Nin's choice of weapon was Senbon. Hunter Nin don't use Senbon to eliminate their targets. Second he didn't eliminate the body on sight. So this only leaves me to the conclusion that the Hunter Nin was working for Zabuza. Kakashi explained with shame in his voice. Silence permeated the room once again as the devastating information sunk in. What are we going to do then Kakash sensei? Sasuke, asked. We train and prepare. I say Zabuza will be back up and running in about two weeks. Now I know there isn't much I can teach you in under two weeks but I have to try my best to prepare you guys. So for the next two weeks I'll be recovering while training you, Kakashi said. Kakashi grabbed the crutches next to him and slowly got up to his feet. He beckoned to his team to follow him as he hobbled down the steps. Team 7 passed the kitchen seeing Tsunami cooking a large meal and a small child. Team 7 walked slash hobbled through the dense forest that surrounded the house. The team continued to travel until they opened up into a large clearing. Kakashi leaned against a particularly thick tree and looked at his team. Today I will teach you an essential skill for young ninja like yourselves. Some of you may pick it up faster than others, Kakashi said while staring at Sakura then switching to Naruto and Sasuke. What are you talking about Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. Kakashi grinned and faced the tree he was leaning on. He placed one of his crutches on the tree. He then placed one of his feet on it. Team 7 watch amazed as Kakashi began to scale the tree without using his hands. Kakashi reached the top before quickly turning and walked back down. He got to the ground and looked at his team. And that's what you call tree climbing, Kakashi said. Kakashi head turned when he heard Naruto's eye. He watched as Naruto approached the tree. It was his turn to have his eye widen as he watched Naruto begin to walk up the tree. Kakashi watched as Naruto quickly walk up the tree and disappeared into the foliage. Well it seems like your teammate has a head start, Kakashi said. He reached into his kunai pouch and threw a kunai each at Sakura's and Sasuke's feet. Use these to mark your progress. Other than that, it's trial and error. I'll be back, Kakashi said. He went to the tree where Naruto ascended and started to make his way up it. 
After several seconds of walking, Kakashi reached the top of the tree. There he found Naruto leaning against one of the thicker branches the tree provided. Kakashi carefully made his way across the branches and sat near Naruto. You know Naruto, you should really try to interact more with your teammates. You three show an abnormal amount of animosity towards each other, Kakashi said. Naruto let out a small laugh while looking away from Kakashi. We show animosity towards each other because we dislike each other. We haven't liked each other since the academy and I doubt that will ever change, Naruto said. Kakashi sighed at Naruto's response. You remind me of myself when I was on a Janan team, Kakashi said. Naruto perked up at this I was on the 4th Hokage's team. One of my teammates were Uchiha and the other was a regular civilian girl. I always used to look down on them due to their lack of skill. Kakashi began. Naruto seemed very interested in his story. One day, my team and I were on an important mission during the Third Shinobi War. The mission was to destroy the Kanabai Bridge. Iwa was using it to transfer troops from Iwa to Kuza, Kakashi said before sighing. During the mission, my teammate, Rin, got captured by Iwa Nin. My other teammate came up with a plan to go off and rescue her. I decided against the plan, deeming the mission more important. My other teammate went against my orders and dashed off into the forest to rescue Rin. Before he left though he commented on my father stating he was the true hero of Konoha, Kakashi said. After thinking for a while, I realized that what he said was true. My father was a hero for saving his teammates. So I decided to rescue my teammate from being killed by an enemy ninja at the cost of my eye, Kakashi said while pointing at his headband. After bandaging the wound we went off to find Rin. We found her tied up in a pit. Now that I look back at it, I should have realized it was a trap, Kakashi said. When we got in the pit, an enemy nin sprung a trap causing a rockfall to fall down on us. It was only due to my teammate's Sharingan that Rin and I were able to escape. He pushed us out the way at the cost of half his body being crushed by a boulder, Kakashi said. Naruto could hear the emotion in Kakashi's voice. With his last dying breath he ordered Rin to implant his newly awakened Sharingan into my eyes. Every day and every time I use this eye, I am reminded by him in one of his most influential phrases. Those who break the rules are trash. But those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Many Konohan and I, myself, live by that code and you should too. Kakashi finished. Silence settled over the two with the only sounds being Sakura and Sasuke training below. Suddenly Naruto released a laugh. Well I guess I'm worse than trash as I couldn't give two fucks about my teammates. I fight for only my loved ones and they sure as hell aren't one of them. So take your quote and shove it up your ass, Naruto said. Naruto turned to jump off the tree but stopped when he felt a strong grip on his arm. He looked back and saw Kakashi holding his arm with a harsh look in his eye. You really don't care Naruto? So you won't care when you're captured by the enemy and are forced to watch your teammates get raped in order to get information from you? You won't care when you, yourself, are locked into a cell and tortured for an unknown period of time with only your teammate to counsel you? You won't care then? Come back to me when you can truthfully answer that question. Kakashi said with a harsh tone in his face. He released Naruto from his grip and watched as he stood there still with his back turned to Kakashi. Kakashi was shocked however when he heard a soft and harsh laugh escape from Naruto. You seem to forget Kakashi. No matter what situation I'm in, I'll never be alone, Naruto said before jumping out of the tree and dashing into the forest. Kakashi lowered his head as Naruto's words registered in his mind. Due to Naruto's container status, he would never be alone. Whether that was good or bad, only Naruto could decide. Naruto was currently sitting in a tree that surrounded a clearing. He seemed to be slowly inspecting his lightning rod. Every once in a while, he would flick it filling the air with the sound of static. I know you're angry. No I'm not. I'm just sitting here in a tree, calmly inspecting my weapon, Naruto said. Naruto heard QB release a laugh. You do realize that I am inside your body. I can sense your emotions, QB said. Silence was Naruto's response. Suddenly Naruto released a loud roar like yell and jumped down from his tree. Who the fuck does he think he is? Lecturing me on how to live. That pathetic lonely pervert, Naruto yelled out. Stop bitching and whining. Why don't you go blow something up or kill someone? QB suggested. Naruto gained a thoughtful look at this you know what? That actually sounds like a good idea, Naruto said. Naruto positioned himself in a comfortable stance. He took a deep breath as several spikes started to ignite from his skin. He raised his lightning as the sparks around him became more visible. Naruto continued to raise his rod as the electricity around him started to dance in an intricate pattern. Naruto smirked, released a loud roar and slammed his lightning rod into the ground. 
with the rest of Team 7, after Naruto escaped into the forest, the rest of Team 7 returned back to Tazana home to eat. They were all currently digging into the feast that Tsunami had prepared. Well Tsunami-san Alisakura was suddenly interrupted when a bright flash of light blinded everyone in the room. Kakashi shot up from his chair in a defensive position as the giant amount of light filled the room. After several seconds the light disappeared to reveal a shocked room of people. What the hell while wow, this time Tazana was interrupted by a huge clap of thunder. The thunder shook the house as it temporarily robbed everyone of their hearing. Everyone minus Kakashi fell to the ground as the volume of the sound caused their ears to bleed. What the hell was that? Kakashi asked himself. The clearing where Naruto was can no longer be called a clearing. A crater would have been more appropriate. The crater was several feet deep and several yards wide. The outer rim of it was burning. Naruto laid in the center of the crater with his hair standing on end and his clothes covered in dust and ashes. Note to self. I am not immune to lightning, Naruto said. Naruto tried to raise himself from his position. A flash of pain forced him to release a growl and stop his attempts. Well shit, Naruto said. Naruto forced himself onto his stomach and began to crawl out of the crater. After several minutes of painful of crawling, Naruto managed to crawl out of the crater and prop himself onto one of the remaining trees. He stared up at the sky as his breath evened. Just, need, to, rest, Naruto said before fainting on a tree. When Haku was a child, she never expected to be where she was right now. As a child, she had an air of innocence that allowed her to block out the horrors of the bloody mist. But when one day that all changed when her father discovered her bloodline ability. He charged in one day and brutally slaughtered his mother and turned onto her. It was only due to her bloodline ability that she was still alive today. She still remembered the frozen horror-stricken faces of her father and his friends. That was the same day Zabuza found her. He took her in and trained her to be the perfect weapon. A medic nin with the precision to kill anyone with only a single senbone. The speed that would trick a high-level chunin. And a deadly bloodline that allowed her to outshine most young shinobi. Now most would think that someone as strong as Haku sounded would go on their own. But Haku couldn't. She owed her life to Zabuza. He trained her to be the perfect shinobi tool. She was his tool. He was free to do whatever he wanted to her. And that was why Haku was currently out so early in the morning. She was trying to collect some herbs to help speed up Zabuza's healing process. Haku was traveling through the forest while idly picking flowers from the ground. She stepped out of a particularly strong cluster of trees and stumbled upon a shocking sight. She now stood on the edge of a crater. The crater seemed to be at least 8 feet deep while being over 30 feet wide. The ground and the container were scorched black. This must be where the lightning struck last night. Haku though to herself. She had been treating Zabuza last night when a loud strike of lightning literally shook the building. Haku looked across the crater to see if any of the herbs she needed were there. She was surprised however to find an unconscious or sleeping blonde lying against the tree. Due to his state of clothing, she figured he was unconscious. That was one of the ninja that Zabuza attacked, Haku said. Her hand immediately slipped into her sleeve as she clutched one of her senbon. She slowly started to cross the crater with her vision set to Naruto. After what seemed to be an eternity, Haku got within a foot of Naruto. She pulled her hand out of her sleeve with her senbon in her grasp. She was poised to strike but hesitated. The desire to kill the pole had suddenly vacated her body. This is what Zabuzo had described to be her one flaw. Her lack of passion for killing. Haku never wanted to kill unnecessarily. And killing an unconscious boy was starting to become a difficult choice for her. Fortunately for her, a decision was made for her. The senbone started to shake violently in her hand. The senbone suddenly flew out of her hands and towards Naruto. She tried to lunge for it but she was too slow. She watched helplessly as the senbone sped towards Naruto. The senbone got within centimeters of Naruto's throat before it stopped suddenly. Naruto opened his eyes suddenly and looked down at the senbone. He then looked up into Haku's eyes. Haku suddenly jumped back into the center of the crater reached into her sleeve to pull out another senbone. She pulled it out and threw it towards Naruto. The senbone that was floating near Naruto's throat turned around. Suddenly the senbone rocketed towards Haku's senbone, knocking out of the air. Haku, seeing that her attack had been blocked, reached into her basket to pull out another senbone but a giant puff of smoke clouded her vision. She quickly fell into a defensive position as the smoke surrounded her completely. She slowly reached into her basket to pull out another senbone but a voice stopped. If you move another muscle, I'll skewer you like a fish. Naruto voice ranged out through the smoke. Haku was hesitant to obey at first but as the cloud of smoke cleared her mind was made up. Surrounding her was what seemed to be hundreds of thousands of different weapons ranging from scene buns to kunais. 
Naruto was still sitting in his previous position but now had his lightning rod pointed at Haku. Well I never expected to meet you or Hunter Ninsan, Naruto said. Haku tensed at the Naruto's voice. Suddenly the weapon started to vibrate as itself they wanted to move from their current position. I would advise you not to make any sudden movements. My lapse in control may be the cause of your death if you do so, Naruto said while standing up. He entered the crater and started to walk towards Haku. He got right in front of her and looked her in her eyes. He smirked when he saw the minute of amount of fear present in her eyes. Well it's strange meeting you out here Hunter Ninsan, Naruto said. Naruto grinned increased when he saw the amount of fear increase. He started to walk around her as if he was inspecting her. Well at least my answer on whether she was a male or female was answered. And I was not disappointed. Naruto thought to himself. Or at least thought he was thinking it to himself. I wholeheartedly agree. Why don't you take her right here on the forest floor like the bitch she is? QB spoke within Naruto's mind. Inwardly Naruto sighed at QB's comment. Did you have mommy issues when you were younger? Because you show a blatant lack of respect for the female sex, Naruto said. I am an entity made from hate and chakra. I have no mother, QB said. Silence came between the two. Outside of Naruto's conversation, Haku was nervously watching Naruto. Internally she was berating herself on being caught so easily while on the outside was watching Naruto. She saw that he seemed to be distracted and that's when he decided to make her move. Her hand struck out with a ice and bone quickly forming at her fingertips. Naruto quickly zoned out from his conversation with Kyuubi and saw a hand, quickly streaking towards his neck. He sighed quickly before closing his eyes. Haku let off a small grin past her impassive face when she saw Naruto seemingly give up and close his eyes. Her grin immediately fell however when she felt several dozen painful pricks appear on her skin. She watched shockingly as her arm seemed to lose all momentum before harmlessly bouncing off of Naruto's chest. You're not the only one who knows how to target pressure points, Naruto said. Haku was about to respond but stopped when she felt several more pricks on her neck. She felt helpless as her eyes became heavy. She fell to the ground unconscious after only several seconds. Naruto released another sigh as the enormous amount of weapons fell to the ground. He made several shadow clones and ordered them to start resealing all of the weapons. He instead went over to the girl and proceeded to drag her over to the closest tree. He tied her up tightly with several feet of ninja wire. After making sure she was tied tightly and there was no chance of her escaping, Naruto decided it was best to wake her up now. He placed his hand in the center of her chest and sent a short electrical burst through her body. Her reaction was immediate. Her head shot up as she frankly started to look around in an attempt to figure out where she was. When she realized where she was and what happened to her, she quickly hung her head in shame while mumbling something about Zabuza. Hello Hunter Ninsan, so nice of you to try to kill me while I'm asleep. I just love it when that happens to me, Naruto said in a sarcastic voice. The girl remained quiet with her head held down. Naruto gave off a slight grin at her act of defiance. It seems I would have to use others' methods to make her talk, Naruto said to himself. In the back of his mind, he could hear QB grumbling about him being a hypocrite or something along those lines. Haka felt a soft touch against her skin that sent a shiver down her spine. She refused to look down to acknowledge Naruto's touch. You know Hunter Ninsan. Naruto started off with. Naruto began to slowly rub his hand across the girl's skin while releasing a small electrical current. This current was meant to relax the girl's muscles and give her a small amount of pleasure. And by the shortening of her breath and the slight smell of hormones in the air, it was working. It's not very nice to ignore me. Naruto finished while sending a large jolt of electricity into the girl. The girl's muscles began to lock up and spasm rapidly as the overstimulation took effect. Her head shot back as her body began to flail around in her bindings. After several seconds of wild flailing, the girl finally managed to gain back control of her own body. She shot Naruto a murderous look as he calmly stared at her with an air of aloofness around him. So are you ready to talk? Naruto said. The girl still remained silent which caused Naruto to smirk. His hand slowly started towards the girl neck to shock her again. Before he was interrupted by a strong gust of wind that came from the girl's mouth. The gust of wind sent him flying across the clearing and into a tree. As soon as the wind hit him, Naruto knew that something was wrong. His chakra had felt like it had been drained from his body. A sudden tiredness fell upon him. And he could feel his electrical output decrease immensely. Naruto slammed harshly into the tree back first as the wind jutsu drove him against it. After several seconds of groaning, Naruto found the energy to look up to see where his opponent was. But when he looked up the girl was gone. All there was left was a pile of ice and a bundle of ninja wire. 
Naruto sighed in relief when he saw that the girl had fled from the area. He knew that he was in no condition to fight right now. His chakra levels felt extremely low and it took an extreme amount of efforts to even move his body. After several minutes of painful exertion, Naruto managed to use the last bit of his chakra to activate his chakra cloak before succumbing to darkness. Naruto was awakened to the sight of Kyuubi looking down upon him with an amused look at size. What the hell are you doing with my chakra Kyuubi? Why do I feel so weak all of a sudden? Naruto yelled. Kyuubi growled at Naruto's accusations. Before you go accusing me of messing up your chakra, why don't you think about your fight for a second and use the smallest amount of intellect I know you barely have, Kyuubi yelled. Naruto grumbled at Kyuubi's insult before deciding to do as it said. He slowly began to analyze his encounter with the girl. Let's see, my chakra levels and lightning abilities were working fine. I even managed to send an electrical shock into her. Everything was fine until she used that wind jutsu on me, Naruto said out loud. And what element is weak against wind jutsu? Kyuubi said as if he was talking to a child. It immediately hit Naruto. Since his body was so attuned with lightning chakra, his body acted like a lightning jutsu and the wind jutsu hit him. So are you telling me that a simple C-rank jutsu can leave me in this condition? Naruto asked. Yes brat. What did you expect? I told you're basically a living lightning bolt. Naruto didn't reply immediately as he was still in shock. He had now discovered a glaring weakness that could be easily used against him. If he ever met a nin that knew a wind release above C rank, he was surely dead. Well is there any way to stop this from happening? Naruto asked. Yeah it's very simple, don't get hit by a wind jutsu, Kyuubi said. Naruto sighed in frustration when he realized he wasn't going to get a straight answer from Kyuubi. The huge glaring hole in his defense was really bothering him. While wind release users are extremely rare, the jutsu aren't as rare. Any fresh out of academy Jinan can learn a great breakthrough. And if he ever got hit by one, he was basically screwed. His lightning abilities would be nullified and he would be barely able to move. No matter which he put it, he was screwed as soon as a wind jutsu even whiffs him. Naruto released a chuckle when he realized what his only solution was. So brat did you figure out a way around your weakness or are you just going to curl up and die? Kyuubi asked. I do have a solution and you already said it. It's really is simple. Naruto started. I just gotta make sure I can't be hit. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.